Okay. The 2017 annual report of Karen Lewis Appeals Officer it highlights some very serious concerns, Minister, around the administration of the Residential Institution Statutory Fund Board, Karen Nua, uh, which of course was established by the Residential Institution Statutory Fund Act of 2012. Some of the decisions and procedural issues in Karen Nua, uh, indeed raise many questions, along with the continuing reports from survivors of abuse uh, of how they've been treated and are being treated in their interactions uh, with the organisation. On John O'Rourke last week, for example, we we again heard some of the human stories behind the fund uh, and the reasons for its establishment, but a particular concern in this regard is the lack of information given to applicants regarding their statutory right uh, to appeal. And I think of the 110 million uh, pledged by the Religious Congregations Minister, something like uh, 103 million um, uh, has been received, uh, 80 million has already been expended. Uh, but um, uh, of the uh, Karenu, I think, received 6,109 applications, but 1,195 didn't receive support upon applications. But of most concern, in the appeals process of those who appealed, 66% 60, 60, uh, uh, were successful, with 42% of appeals upheld and others referred back to Karanua or partially allowed. But there's real concern about the length of time it took to process appeals during 2017. 39% took over 52 weeks, uh, only, 17, uh, uh, or only 7 per cent were completed in less than 13 weeks, and 23% were completed in 13 to 26 weeks, and 20% were completed in 26 to 39 weeks. Uh, and 10% uh, were completed in 39 to 52 uh, weeks. And of course, these unsatisfactory time frames uh, uh, you know, were there while there were two working appeal officers. And these times are very likely to increase now that the second appeals officer refused to renew uh, uh, to the contract and hasn't yet been uh, replaced. But the reading of the sample uh, appeals that are to hand, Minister, are particularly shocking. And some of the decisions seem to have been plucked out of thin air. Where are the written guidelines saying that only external doors, for example, are included? Uh, how, are, how are applicants expected? to provide the requisite information when they aren't even being informed of the parameters for decision making. Uh, thanks, Carla. Uh, Thank you. Uh, be there daily. Thanks, Kim Corla. Uh, Minister, another Karen Nua Appeals Officer at Annual Report, another crushing expose of the, I suppose, severe dysfunction of an organisation that was set up supposedly to administer a fund for the survivors of institutional abuse, which has actually become in and of itself a vehicle for causing further distress to people who applied for support such as health care, housing uh, improvements and so on, a system that has been revealed yet again to be totally arbitrary, totally inconsistent and bureaucratic when it could have been a simple application form. It's been adversarial, a lack of empathy, a lack of sympathy. And, you know, we've raised previously, I think this is, you're the fourth minister and I congratulate you on your new job, but you're the fourth education minister that we've had to raise this issue with. Year after year, they point out the patterns, uh, the problem with the administration of the fund, with the way survivors are treated. As, as Deputy Bruin said, a clear majority of the refusals by Karanua were subsequently upheld on appeal. And we have to take into account that these are elderly people and sick people who time is not on their side. Almost 40% of the cases, the waiting time for the appeal, which ultimately becomes successful, is over a year. And this is absolutely shocking. Like the failure on behalf of Karanua to implement previous appeals officers' report uh, and to deal with the successful appeals is frightening as well, because cases which were successfully appealed as far back as 2014 are waiting on the services that they applied for almost four years ago. Now, the question really is, when is this going to stop? When are the barriers going to stop being put in the way? People have a statutory right to this fund. We have a situation today where there's still 2,449 applications in the system awaiting a decision. Are they going to go into the backlog as well? Minister, we need a second appeals officer straight away and we need some action on these reports. Thank you, Deputy. Montana. Okay. Um, thank you and thank you, um, Chairman, and thank the two deputies for raising this issue. And uh, I know it was a broad uh, question or a, a broad topical issue around just to, uh, the discussion around the 2017 annual report of Karen as appeal officer. So I, I have a fairly broad answer, but there are statistics and maybe bits of information here that might be relevant uh, to this discussion. Um, Karen is an independent statutory body, as you know, established in 2013. Um, 
under the provisions of the Residential Institutions Statutory Fund Act 2012 to utilise the €110 million Euro cash contributions pledged by the congregations to support the needs of survivors of residential institutional child abuse. It is entirely funded by those contributions and no exchequer funding is involved. The Board adopted the service name Karanua in October 13 and set up a website www.karanua.ie. Section 22 of the RISF Act provides for a right of appeal against decisions made by Karanua. Mr Pat Whelan, the first appeals officer, was appointed to that position in 2014, with further one-year periods in 15 and 16. Two appeals officers, Mrs. Ms Geraldine Gleeson and Mr Brendan O'Leary, were appointed in May 2017 to deal with a backlog of cases that had built up. And the 17 annual report, which is Ms Gleeson's and Mr O'Leary's first report, covers the period 15th of May 17 to 30 of April 18. The report was published on the 4th of October uh, 2018. There were 140 cases outstanding when they took up their position and they received an additional 87 appeals between May 17 and April 18, given a total of 227 appeals for consideration. 193 cases were completed during this reporting period, leaving 34 appeals, appeals on hand. The report confirms that of the 193 cases completed between May 17 and 18, 83, uh, which is 43%, 40 as pointed out, were upheld. That is, the original decision and applications was revoked by the appeals officer. 18, which is 9%, were partially upheld, and 26, 14%, were referred back to Karanua for reconsideration in accordance with specific directions from the appeals officer. 54, which is 28%, were not upheld, and that is, the original decision was affirmed by the appeals officer, and 12, 6% uh, were dis, uh, discontinued or withdrawn. With the 87 additional appeals received during the period covered by this report, 26 related to home improvements or repairs, 22 related to personal well-being health matters, 15 related to household personal items, 8 were funeral expenses, 7 education, 4 eligibility, 4 travel transport and 1 for financial assistance. The two appeals officers, officers were appointed in May 17 for a one-year term. For personal reasons, one of the appeals officers decided not to accept reappointment to the position. Given that the number of appeals on hand is manageable by one appeals officer, I do not intend to appoint a second appeals officer at this time. But the situation will be monitored, and I take on board uh, what was said here tonight. To date, costs amounting to €82,200 have been incurred in relation to the appeals officer's work. Administrative support report is provided by a department official. The annual report addresses a number of specific policy issues, including issues raised in previous annual reports. The perception that Karanua made an administrative decision to refuse to process further applications from applicants on the basis that they had already received support and services in favour of those who had not yet applied to receive a report was a core issue of previous annual reports. Karanua's position is that they must manage the funds so that it can be shared fairly among all people who can apply to them. This policy issue is primarily a matter for the Board of Karanua. Decisions of the appeals officer may be appealed to the High Court in a point of law. One such appeal was initiated in 2017 by the Board of Karanua. The case centred on the personal allocation limit introduced by Karanua in the revised guidelines pu published in 2016, June 2016. Based on the legal advice received, this case was settled by the appeals officers. There is ongoing litigation in the High Court, with seven cases being taken against the appeals officers on the grounds that the personal allocation limit of €15,000 shouldn't be applied retrospectively where the applicant has already received funding for services from Karanua. Thanks, Chairman. Uh, thank you, Minister. Uh, Deputy Tommy Brown. Uh, uh, thank you. Um, one minute. Yeah, thanks, uh, Look, well, well, Minister, given the you know the lack of intervention, um, uh, you know, on, on these worrying reports by your predecessors, including Deputy Bruton, I mean, it is very disappointing that you, you're now saying that you don't intend to appoint a second appeals officer. Now, uh, I mean, I think that's the least that might have been expected uh, from you. I mean, there are reports that these very vulnerable people, whom the, the state, I think you'll agree, let down horribly, they're being re-traumatised by the treatment by an agency that was set up by the state, in fact, to, to pay reparations. Uh, Tom Cron and Dr Mary Lodato, who were both survivors of institutional uh, abuse, for example, resigned from the board of Karanua, citing their concerns over the treatment of survivors. I mean, what training has, has the staff of Karanua received to be dealing with uh, you know, this cohort of, of very vulnerable citizens? And when will the Independent Survivor Consultation Forum be established? And what's the situation in relation to the CEO, uh, Minister? Uh, what contingency fund is in place for those cases that are currently before the High Court? Um, there's a lot of questions, really, uh, that you need to read yourself 
yourself into. I mean, I wished you well last Thursday, uh, when you're, uh, or, or on Tuesday, was it, when you were appointed, but you need to do a lot and, and get into, uh, you know, and, and start dealing with the Karanua uh, issues very quickly. In this job this week, but I am really begging you not to just take a nod and the standard answer that other ministers have given us on this. The time is not with the survivors of industrial abuse, and the answer you gave us is simply not accurate. One appeals officer is not enough. 39% of the cases took over a year to process. There are 2,449 applications awaiting a decision. How many of them are going to go into appeals? Frankly, there isn't enough uh, in one. We need to urgently. And as Deputy Bruin said, what is critically worrying is how many of those cases are going to be dragged into the courts to get their claims settled. Currently, the case is going through the courts where Karanua has failed outright to implement the decision of the appeals officer. And we should point out that 200,000 is roughly the cost of each of those cases. These costs are taken from the survivor fund. It's absolutely shameful. We need an efficient uh, scheme. We need the review. Uh, we need you to take some notice, please, on this and to look at some of the suggestions that we've put forward over the years because, to be honest, I think we've taken a more active interest in it than the Department has and we've made some really practical suggestions that we'd appeal to you to look at. Uh, yeah, look, I, I take <coughs> those com contributions uh, seriously and whether we're talking about length of time or lack of information or too bureaucratic a system. For people who are uh, at a stage of their life uh, which had, having gone through the ordeal with, uh, in, in relation to uh, institutional abuse, um, it's something I take very, very seriously. Uh, I take on board your suggestion uh, that there will possibly be a need for a second appeals officer. What I'll do, I'll, I'll monitor that situation, I'll speak to my officials after this, and if there's ways we can make it easier for people, our most vulnerable, uh, the, a most vulnerable group of people, elderly, who have gone through what they've gone through, um, words were used tonight like empathy and sympathy and, uh, have not have, and, and having to avoid any form of adver adversarial approach, um, I, I'm, I'm supportive of uh, working with you on that. So look, I take on board what, what you've said. I also take on board uh, the fact that um, you're allowing me to get into my brief uh, and affording me that uh, opportunity. But certainly on this issue, I'm going to uh, speak to my officials uh, and get uh, uh, a comprehensive update uh, from them on, the, on a one-to-one on -to -one basis. Thank you. Uh, You're thank you, Mr. Nice, Claire. Yes. Thank, you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. And that concludes the uh, topic of issues. And we now move to the next item, which is the motion re.